Today we're going to draw a hummingbird. The best possible way to learn to draw is to draw from real life. And it doesn't matter if you're just doing quick scribbles. When these guys flit around like this, a quick scribble is all you're going to get anyway. So never be put off if your drawing from real life just looks scribbly. I love these hummingbirds and these magical almost like a, a, a mystical creature. They just seem to hover and float like, like little fairies or something like that. It's almost like they don't seem real. Fantastic for an Aussie to come and see these animals that a lot of people probably take for granted, but I absolutely love these guys. Many ways to learn how to draw. I'm going to break this up into a few shapes. You see we've got like circle shapes, half circle shapes, skinny triangle shapes. Just looking at the shapes that might represent this bird quite well. I think the main thing about learning to draw is just to get in and have a go. It's not the end of the world if things don't work out right. But the more you try, the better you get. But breaking it down to shapes like this is one of the easy ways to draw. One of the ways that I'll come back to occasionally from time to time. You see the circle for the head there. The head of the bird's not actually a circle, but it's a guideline. You put that circle down and then you put corrections in. In fact, the face isn't like a ice cream cone either. It's, it's different, but you put down a few guidelines and then you just alter. It's like you shave away bits. You adapt bits. But you first have to put something down in the first place to make corrections. So in some ways you should never worry about getting things in the wrong place. The real skill is to look at it and sort of think, yeah, it doesn't look quite right, so I'll just make a change. Just draw straight over top. Use an eraser, it doesn't matter. And when you draw, you should sort of look at the positives. Look at the bits that you did get right, as well as the bits that you got wrong. And correct the bits that you got wrong. But you got to sort of really enjoy the bits that you get right. Like the shape of the foot there. Such a cool bird-like shape. And you see I'm holding my pencil the same way you would as if you were writing. So a lot of people out there, even beginners, have probably been holding a pencil like this for years. You're already exercising those muscles when you write. Because writing's just simplified drawing, and drawing's just complicated writing. You can see here I'm enjoying getting carried away a bit with the feet. I like the claws on a hummingbird. They look dinosaur-like. And if you've been following my channel, you know I love drawing dinosaurs. And there were probably dinosaurs a little bit like this back in the day. Because dinosaurs can be small as well as big. Now you see I'm holding my pencil in a different way to put the shading on. If you hold your pencil flat like that, you have more of the graphite in contact with the paper. You shade twice as fast. You're also not applying as much pressure. So you've got a wider, softer line. And again, if you get something wrong, just pull the eraser out. While I hold my pencil like this to do the eye detail, it is a way of holding the pencil that you can apply a lot more pressure. So you get darker lines, even with one pencil. You can also press very gently to get soft lines, but the hardest lines you can get holding the pencil this way. About halfway through any drawing comes a stage where you sort of think, yeah, this is a mess, it's not working. And it's at that point I'd encourage you to continue through to the end. Because if you give up halfway, you never learn. And sometimes you just push you all the way through 
and it does work. I've been drawing wildlife for over 30 years now and I always get to this point where yeah it just looks a mess and if I push through 90% of the time it works out fine. Sometimes I still have pieces that are just terrible and I just chuck them away. I'm just giving you a little example of curved sweeping lines that helps describe the feathers. So if you look carefully, that's what I'm doing here. But if you look at other artists, other artists may use different lines to describe feathers. You see with the tail, I'm doing those sweeping fast lines. Sometimes it's good not to be careful. Sometimes it's good just to be sort of quick and fluid and let those lines flow. And here with the wings, you can see I'm doing that again. Swishy lines to make the feathers and I may even just turn the page a bit to make those lines easier to do. You see, I'm not doing them slow, I'm doing them fairly fast. You get a certain flow going, you never stop halfway, you just go all the way through. And that just takes a bit of practice. You can practice on another piece of paper before you put it on your drawing if you wish. Practice a few swishy flowing lines, and you'll be right. Holding the pencil into the shading position again, putting a bit of shade on the wings now. If one of those lines was not quite perfect, a bit of shading is probably going to hide that. Again, I turn the page so it goes smoothly with the way my hand wants to curve to do this line. It gives me a bit more control. So, at the moment, while everybody's in self-isolation to hide from this dreaded virus, uh, it may be a time to draw from photos for a little while. Uh, maybe practice a few skills or draw objects around the house but eventually when we get out of this lockdown and we are free to go and wandering around again it's good to get out and look at these guys in real life and like I say even if it's just a scribble the experience of that and the fact that you're moving your hand really fast which frees you up is going to improve the way you draw how to draw a hummingbird. Best get out in the field and try, but I've shown you step by step how I will draw a hummingbird.